Today we're going to be talking about how batteries work. Not just the iPhone battery, but any lithium ion battery. So it could be iPhone, Android, your laptop, your electric razor, could be anything that uses this type of battery, which is the majority of batteries. So I'm going to talk about how to properly charge them. We're going to take it from point of view of a cell phone just to give you an idea. But like I said, this can be applied across other items as well. Let's first talk about when it's optimized to charge your battery. First of all, the temperature does matter because if the phone is too cold under 32 degrees, it is going to go ahead and lose charge. And if it's too hot above 95 degrees, the phone's going to get too hot and it actually degrades the life of the battery. Ways to counter this is you could always remove a case. If it is too hot and your case is confined, you want to take it off while charging. That can definitely help your battery life. Now, there's no overcharging like there used to be a long time ago. You, If you charge your phone, what the phone will do is once it hits 100%, it will change to more of a trickle. So it'll watch and when it gets cert to a certain percentage, maybe like 98, 99, it'll start charging to get it back up to 100. So it won't overcharge and blow up your phone. But is it really good to do this? That's my main question. And my point of view is it's not a good practice to do this. I think it's best to charge your phone probably from like up to 80%, maybe 85, 90 at the most. I wouldn't push it all the way up to 100 all the time unless you're gonna need that charge. Now, if I'm gonna be out all day without a charger, I'll definitely make sure I'm at 100. But if I'm gonna be somewhere else with a charger and I'm at 80%, I'm gonna let it go. And then when I get to that other place at 50%, I'll plug it back in, get to another 80, and then I'll be back at the other location. So why do I talk about this? It's You can kind of think of charging a battery like a highway. When your battery's at, we'll say 60%, there's five lanes open. Traffic's running smooth, it's running great. Then you get to 70%, now there's four lanes. 80%, three lanes. And then the higher you go, the less lanes there are open, and the harder it is to get to charge into the battery. So that's why it always takes longer to get that last few percent of your phone because there's just not a lot of room for the energy to flow into it. And because of this, it can hurt the battery over time. So what I suggest is going through and charging the way I mentioned up to maybe like 80-90% and then let it go unless you need it throughout the whole day. You may also hear things about people saying if your battery keeps giving you problems just let it die. I do not believe in that because that's the old batteries that had memory and they haven't been used in a very long time. So they would let the battery die so the memory would erase kind of like a reboot of a computer and then you would be able to go ahead and charge the battery up to full and it would then know where full is in the battery. We don't use those batteries anymore and we haven't in a long time. So I do not recommend doing that. Your phone has a set number of charge cycles, which is 100% battery. So if you use 50% battery, you charge it, you use another 30, you charge it, use another 20, now you equal 100%. Once you equal 100%, that is one charge cycle. The more charge cycles you use, the quicker your battery will start to decay over time because batteries shrink as they go. That's why two years later, your battery is not performing well. It could be a year and a half if you use a heavy phone user, and it could be three, four years if you don't use your phone much. The problem with cycles is, say you just finished your cycle and you're at 5%. Now you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna let my battery die. So my phone goes ahead and resets. Well, what happens is when that 5% and it automatically goes through and depletes and your phone turns off, that is counted as a charge cycle. Because that's counted as a charge cycle, you just used 5% for 100% of one cycle. And then you charge your phone up. So I really 
recommend not letting your phone die the best you can because that will go ahead and prolong the life of your phone. Also when charging your phone there's different ways to charge so you want to pay attention to that. If you need to plug it into a computer, make sure the computer's turned on or the laptop's on. If you have them off, there's not as much voltage going through and that could cause problems. Same with even if it is turned on technically, because they're not gonna put as much voltage through as your wall socket is. Same with using a car charger. Your car to most, maybe some of the newer ones might, so I wanna make sure I say that there, but most of the cars and the, how they're made they're not going to go ahead and be able to produce the voltage you need to go ahead and charge your phone properly. So it's going to be less voltage going in and sometimes that can go ahead and degrade your battery over time. Wireless charger is another. Wireless charging is great and it's a nice convenience, but it's not where it needs to be yet. It does put a strain on the battery. Still to this day, I plug the phone in because I know my battery will last longer. And when you're paying up to $1,200, maybe even $2,000 for a phone nowadays, and you know the point of the phone that's gonna go bad first is your battery, you really wanna go ahead and take care of it. And I think all these tips using this will help prolong your battery. My battery is at 97% health if I look in the Apple settings, and I've been following these for over a year and a half. So they are definitely good things to follow. I hope this really did help you out and I hope it lets your battery last longer. I have a bunch of other battery tips like charging your battery three quick ways. And I wanna thank you so much for the view. I'll see you over there.